got a proper fucking treat for you. From the comedy store in LA to Vauxhall Comedy in London, will you please start going nuts for your last act? In the system here. It's my first time in London, everybody. It's true, I am from Los Angeles. My career is going very well. I'm doing a free show following a man named Mooch at an underground sex club. So, <laughs> this is exactly what I had on my vision board. <laughs> I'm out of control! I'm out of control! I'm out of control! It's my first time in London, though, and I didn't know you guys call cocaine gear, right? Which makes me suddenly really understand the show Top Gear. <laughs> you know, we need a faster car! Faster! Faster car! <laughs> like, yeah, like the actor Richard Gear in our country, he stands Richard Cocaine. Hey, fuck. Fucking your bells, how are you? Ben? <laughs> Wes, Westminster, good to meet you. I've done a lot of drugs, clearly. Uh, this Komodo did not put on itself. <laughs> I'm 34 years old, I shouldn't look like this. <laughs> Every line of my nose put another one on my face. Because <laughs> I party hard, man! I party until the sun comes up. Because to me, that's the responsible thing to do. Wait till the sun comes up. I'm not gonna drive on drugs in the dark. <laughs> That's dangerous. Wait till 7 a.m. swing by church on the way home, repent, and do it again next week. I still party, I just do it differently. Like a couple weeks ago, I did snort some cocaine, but I just stayed home and read a book. <laughs> and I finished the book. That drug works. The Bible has never been more entertaining. <laughs> I walked around reading it out loud at 4 a.m. naked in my apartment. What's gonna happen next, Leviticus? <laughs> I'm not doing it. This was not the first nor the last time Alex was almost hit by a car. Oh, that's very nice. So we have to get the nice link. Yep. Seeds on the outside. I think it's quite right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This country is not supporting cheese and guys. <laughs> The biggest issue my entire life is I have one of the worst cases of eczema on the planet. Like when I was a kid, my skin was scaly, itchy, pale, flaky, red. I had pus like oozing out of my body. I looked like a hot dog that was run over by a car. It was a brutal way to grow up. Now, when I was a child, I used to have to take baths when I was growing up to like, heal my skin in warm water every night. And I used to have friends sleep over all the time because I was a kid and I was cool. It didn't mean that I got out of bath time, so I wouldn't want to be alone. I would coerce my friends to sit on the toilet with me while I took a bath. And I only realized last year how fucked up that is. <laughs> I was Louis C.K. my friends at nine years old. And the reason I thought about it is because when Me Too movement happened and every guy in this room had to go through his entire sexual inventory and I started going back from when I was 33 on and I thought I was safe and then I got to nine and I was, oh shit. <laughs> I made my friends watch a scaled up lizard splash around in a tub like they were in a fucked up third world zoo. 
And when that movement happened, and people were like, oh yeah, ladies, if it happened 10 years ago, why didn't you talk about it? Why didn't you talk about it, ladies? I knew exactly why you didn't talk about it. Because my friends never talked about it. It was shameful. It was embarrassing. They would go to school on Monday, and they're like, hey, did you sleep over at Alex? And they're like, oh yeah, uh, we watched Ninja Turtles 2. And then nothing else happened. <laughs> Weird way to introduce myself to you all. The next station is Westminster. Change for the Jubilee Line. Point the gap between the drum. Then, are you guys worried about technological singularity? Are you worried about robots catching up and murdering us all? <laughs> I'll tell you this, I'm not worried about it for a couple reasons. One, I think robots are going to mirror our society. Clap your hands if you've ever murdered somebody. <laughs> this guy right here, sir, this is not the place to have a murder reveal party, okay? You do that at home on your own terms. Look, I'm from Baltimore, and I've never murdered anyone, and murder is a high school elective where I come from, okay? No, I think robots are going to do things I like to do, which means robots are going to go out to the desert, do some weird drugs, find themselves, and come back a bohemian artist. <laughs> They're going to be like, dude, just because we are machines doesn't mean we're part of the machine. <laughs> They're going to snort some motor oil and be like, was that synthetic? <laughs> Last night I could only see zeros and ones, but this morning I saw a two. <laughs> My servers are fried. <laughs> Robots are gonna buy all the festival tickets. You watch, man. Glastonbury, Burning Man, all robots from this point on. You guys don't believe me, but think about it. What well, robots are very good at buying tickets. What's the first question you're asked when you buy a ticket? Are you a robot? <laughs> but the other reason why I don't think robots are gonna catch up and murder us all. Seven years ago, IBM built Watson. Does anyone remember this? It was the smartest robot ever built. Does anyone remember what it was designed for? Jeopardy. It won Jeopardy. It beat all the smartest humans that had ever played the game. People said, that's it, we're fucked. Robots are smarter than humans. I don't think so. Watson cost $31 million to build. It won $40,000 on Jeopardy. <laughs> that's the stupidest robot I've ever heard of. Truth is, though, robots already have caught up, right? How many of you, knowing this is the last section, cannot wait to look at your phone? No? You guys are above it? The fact that I even mentioned your phone, did you feel it go off in your pocket? There's a whole world in there, man. You don't have to pay attention to me. There's friends trying to get a hold of you. There's notifications and likes just waiting for you, man. <laughs> I hate this thing. I hate it. I would throw my phone off a bridge if I didn't need it to tell me how to get home. <laughs> And I know how to get home. I don't trust myself anymore. I put in Google Maps to go to my neighbor's house because it's four seconds quicker to go to my back door than my front door. Last year I broke my phone, and for four whole days, I didn't have a phone. And you know what I did? I looked around. Are any of you old enough to remember looking around? Looking around's great. Standing in line at a grocery store looking at magazines like, yeah, Cosmopolitan, I do want to know 47 ways to pleasure my man because there's nothing else for me to do right now! <laughs> I started talking to people again. I struck up conversations with random strangers on the street. I loved it! You know who didn't love it? Every person I talked to! <laughs> So look, all I'm gonna ask is like, when you're in a live event, like comedy at a concert, put down your phone. When you're trying to decide what to watch on Netflix, put down your phone. When you're having sex with a stranger later tonight, <laughs> put down your phone. <laughs> Unless you're filming it. At which point, turn it horizontally! You goddamn amateur videographers! Stop sending me vertical sex tapes! You guys are awesome, thank you so much.
Alex Hooper, take one. Whoa, is that 100% all beef stacked between two gluten-free buns with a load of mayo on top? It's so big, I can't even hold it in my hands. Is it even going to fit in my mouth? What do you do with a burger this size? Alex is show prep, pick one. My girlfriend and I, we're at the point now where we're thinking about having children. Like the puppies, they were the starter kit, right? Now we're thinking about going on to the real thing. So I've been listening to all these podcasts about like what to do when you're getting ready to have a child. And one of the podcasts I listened to talked about how now technology is so advanced that you can make designer children. So you can combine an egg and a sperm, make an embryo, have 10 different embryos, and they will tell you the characteristics of each embryo so you can know which one to eliminate. Do we like this or no? No. I don't think it's good at all. I don't think it's a good idea. But here's my question. If you are going to design your kid, how hot do you make your kid? <laughs> like, wait, how hot would you make your kid, sir? One to ten. Oh, like, like <laughs> Steve, Steve was showing me to Paul Rudd. How hot are we making your kid? <laughs> a seven. I like a seven. Because you don't want to make it too hot, right? Because hot people, like, they just, like, waltz around the world. They don't even know things cost money. They're oblivious to everything. But, like, a seven, like, that's good. That's, like, they'll get to CEO, but they got to really work their way through middle management first. <laughs> Like, I think I would make my kid, like, a five. Like, make him struggle a little bit more. Because <laughs> ugly people, like, you know, we have to work for things. Now look, am I beautiful? Fuck yes I am. Do I have to prove it through my personality? Fuck yes I am. <laughs> and that's a good thing. That's a very good thing. Branston Pickle, Cheddar, and Toast. We're going for it. This hot? You might have to put your hand down more. Than I'm not going to put my hand any further. <laughs> but, like, I don't feel... And then, actually, if you press the minus on the hole, so it's a side, just so... <sighs> so stupid. On from over here. I'm going to turn the hole on. If you watch the... Yep. That was it. Ah! Last year, I was hired to do a corporate gig at 10 a.m. on Saturday morning. Already a red flag for me. <laughs> I was hired to perform for 100 men. Red flag number two. <laughs> All of these men were CEOs and influencers who get together every Saturday, sing a network and suck each other's dicks, or whatever 100 <laughs> men do when you get together. <laughs> And if you're having trouble picturing the type of man I'm talking about, imagine you're on a lift by yourself, your floor is already pressed, he steps in, looks right at you, and pushes it again. <laughs> That's the energy. <laughs> now, if you were brand new to this group, they had a routine. You had 15 seconds to walk on stage, state your name, your occupation, and one thing that makes you cool. <laughs> Everything was going smoothly until one guy got up there and he said hi my name is Jim I'm the CEO of a tech company and what makes me cool is I was raped by wolves <laughs> <laughs> silence <laughs> from 100 men no one knew how to process this <laughs> The moderator of the conversation tried to save it. He went, ha ha ha, Jim, did you just say you were raised by wolves? And more emphatically, this guy goes, no. I was raped by wolves. He gave you an out, Jim. Next time, take the out. Other men, they went up there, they talked about base jumping, backpacking through Asia without a cell phone. One man saved another man's life after he was hit by a boat in open water. He took off his own bathing suit and fashioned it into a tourniquet. Those are pretty cool stories. Meanwhile, Jim is in line, listening to all that. <laughs> oh, you think those are cool? <laughs> Wait till you hear about the furry dick tail I'm about to throw down. Notice, he said wolves. Multiple wolves? 
It's called a pack of wolves, not a gangbang of wolves. <laughs> wolves are monogamous. What did you do to them? I've been camping a bunch of times. I imagine you guys have been camping before. I've had that moment in the middle of the night when you hear something rustling outside of the bushes. You go, oh my god, what if I got mauled by a wolf? I've had that thought. I've never once had the thought they would get together. <laughs> We always eat these people. It's Saturday night. What if we fuck this guy? <laughs> no one's gonna believe him. <laughs> Look, you two in the front hold your teeth into his neck so he can't move. We'll take turns pounding him from behind, then we'll switch it up. It's only weird if you make it weird. Wolf back promise. <laughs> You dare. That is gonna break. Yeah, that's oh, that's definitely gonna break. London is very well lit for cameras. <laughs> <laughs> like, look at this shit. CCTV this is like a fucking Michael Mann movie. <laughs> With a coyote running through the streets. <laughs> That's never happened. Apple, you gotta have an Alex filter. That's how anti-technology I am. Just My literally. phone turned off after <laughs> taking a photo with Alex. So a friend of mine said, if you want to get off drugs, here's what you gotta do. You're gonna read this book every single night. He gave me a book called The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. Have you guys heard of that book? Yeah. So I read it, just a couple pages, every single night before I went to bed to take the edge off. <laughs> I fell in love with the power of now. I fell in love with this message in this book to the point where over four weeks, I read this book six times. To the point where I read it so much that the message stopped resonating with me and really didn't feel it anymore. So I was like, okay, that book doesn't work anymore. There's gotta be a stronger self-help book out there, right? <laughs> so I went to Amazon, went to similar titles, and that's when I found You Are a Badass. And I was like, okay, yeah. I could be a badass. <laughs> and I got this book, You Are a Badass, and I read it every single day, and I told myself, you're a badass, you're a badass, you're a badass, and I walked around feeling like a badass to the point where I read this book so many times that I stopped feeling like I was a badass. So I was like, God, this book doesn't 
work anymore. There's got to be something else out there, right? So then I went to Amazon and I went back to similar titles, and that's when I found Get Your Shit Together. <laughs> yeah! That's what I need, man. I don't need encouragement. Don't tell me I'm a badass. I need to be berated. I need to get my shit together. I need you to put your boot over my neck and scream at me about my unrealized potential. I need to get my shit together. And I read this book seven times, man, and you better believe I got my shit together. But what happens when your shit's together? It starts to fall apart. So I was like, man, get your shit together. It's not working anymore. Is there a stronger self-help book? Is there? Is there? So I went back to Amazon, and I went back to similar titles, and that's when I found the subtle art of not giving a fuck. <laughs> Give a fuck? So I went to the bathroom stall, I chopped up a few pages on the back of the toilet seat, and I ran up on the street. I don't give a fuck, dude! I don't give a fuck! <laughs> so at this point, I don't give a fuck at all, to the point where I did give a fuck so much that I actually started giving a fuck. And I was like, oh man, I gotta buy another self help book. But I took my bank account, and I was out of money, so I broke into my brother's room and I stole his DVDs, and I took him to the pawn shop, just looking so at $16, so I go back to Amazon. And that's when I found the strongest book of all. That's when I found Unfuck Yourself. <laughs> Everything is safe. 
One time I was doing this bit, and a woman in the front row gave me the answer. She said, Alex, you cannot walk in a straight line behind us. We can't see you that scary. What you have to do is make a curve like you're rounding first base heading for second. I thought about that. So you hear footsteps, turn around, no one's there. <laughs> then I magically appear next to you like, yo! Didn't want to creep you out. I'm already spoken for. See you on the other side of the rainbow. Ha ha! <laughs> Alex Hooper, everybody! Hi, everybody! Hello. 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 Alright. Put the camera away. You ever seen American Beauty? Stop. <laughs>